Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, finally been able to get back down in the man cave. My knee is healing nicely from surgery. I'm able to walk down the flight of stairs now. I'm back at work, um, all that good stuff. So, what I want to do today is just do a quick video um, from the man cave and show you what I use uh, for my, what I guess I would consider my bushcraft EDC. And what that tool is and uh, kind of discuss some of the different types of these tools that are available to you guys so stick around it's gonna be fun so one item that um, always gets overlooked I think in discussions of gear and equipment which you take with you um, and certainly is one of the most fun uh, topics to talk about is pocket knives I love pocket knives I have all kinds of pocket knives and as you can see here this is just a small bit of my collection of knives that I use, but these are very specific. These are what I consider camper knives. And if you, you know, I'm not a knife historian, so I'm going to probably say a couple of facts here that may be incorrect, but my belief is that the camper knife, style knife, has been around for a very, very long time. <clears throat> and um, certainly since back probably dates back to the cowboy days probably even earlier than that but really what a camper knife is it's a pocket knife that has a main blade and then has um, some utility blades associated with it that make life easier when you're out camping or out in the field like this one now this model here this is a very old boker made in the USA it's probably in the 20s, maybe in the 1930s when this one was made. Um, most camper knives follow this kind of basic pattern of a main blade, uh, a screwdriver with a bottle opener, um, a can opener, or in this case a tin opener. It's a very old style of can opener. And then an awl. And then there, from there there's different variations. And then also typically with camper knives or these old multi-tools is there's gonna be some kind of bail on it uh, for attaching a lanyard to clipping it to your pocket so a very old design been around forever you know any any man who's working out in the woods um, or on a ranch or on a farm is gonna find need for this and you have to think about these tools these are really these predate multi-tools that we have today. This is this was the multi-tool back then, back in the 20s and 30s. This is the multi-tool you would carry, and this would cover base your you know most of what you needed to do in the field. A good solid uh, high carbon steel blade that you could sharpen easily. A nice big thick screwdriver with a, a decent bottle opener on it. Your tin opener or can opener as we call them now. And then that heavy-duty awl for punching holes uh, when you're having to do sewing or um, other types of repair on material like such as leather, you know, especially if you're working with harnesses or bridle leather, things like that, you would need an awl. It would be a good tool to have. It's also a great tool for scraping and um, uh, using pushing and indents, things like that. So multi-purpose. And this is the oldest one I have. Like I said, this is probably from the 20s or the 30s. Uh, Boker USA, really cool knife. Second one in the collection, and a lot of people have these. This is the old, uh, the old Forest Master. Um, Forest Master, um, I think these are probably from the 60s, maybe the 70s. Um, plastic handle, um, a little bit cheaper in quality than the Boker. Uh, but still a very much a usable tool. I've used this in the field before. It works great. It's got the bail on it. Of course, it's got a high carbon steel um, main blade. This one has a little bit of different configuration. The uh, can opener is now over here, and it's a different style of can opener. More of one we're used to seeing. Bottle opener and screwdriver over here. And then the awl is it's a little bit different than of all. It's more of a, a, a smaller blade sharpened on one side so not that quite that pointy all shape that the evoker had these can be found in antique stores flea markets for nothing I mean they're, they're cheap they sell them for cheap so it's a it's a great uh, tool to pick up cheap if you've got the money if you're looking to get into start collecting these the, these forest masters are 
always available. I see them everywhere. <clears throat> Next one is a little bit different. Um, this is a Camillus. Uh, this is a stainless blade. It's still Camillus made in the USA, so it's older. It's um, probably 70s, 80s. It um, has a, a Durlin plastic handle. Like the Forest Master, it has very similar blade setup. Can opener, bottle opener, screwdriver, and then the awl is much more of a blade and actually has um, a little bit of a, um, a pointed end on it that's been ground down. Great knife. Now this is one you don't see a lot of use of anymore. I don't see a lot of people using these or talking about these, but this is a Remington. Um, and it's the uh, R7. The R7 is their camper knife. Um, it has a little bit of a different blade. It has that down swept edge more and a more of a pronounced um, kind of bull head to it. It's a little bit fatter at, at, up here. Um, What's cool about this knife is it has a saw instead of the awl. And um, a saw can certainly come in handy when you're in camp trying to do some chores. Um, I like having a good saw. This is a nice one. It works really well. Um, it also has, of course, your bottle opener screwdriver, your can opener. And then it has a spade blade on it too which is really great for carving. So a few additional uh, tools on this one. Now probably one of my favorites, the most used pocket knives is the Swiss Army uh, Victorinox Farmer. The Farmer, it, like all the other classic camp knives, it has a stainless main blade but it has this great awl and that awl is fantastic for striking a fire steel let me show you what i mean it has a nice sharp edge to it easily scrapes a fire steel and the the awl is in the right position so when you're pushing down on it it's not going to collapse on you some of the awls are in the wrong position and then you try to press on them and they collapse this one's in the right it's in the right area so it's a great tool to have for bushcraft because you don't have to have a striker with your ferro rod you don't have to use your knife your main knife you can use your awl and save your other blades but just very easily scrapes of fire steel and then of course the other great feature on the farmer um, that a lot of the other knives don't have is the saw can't go wrong with the saw in camp great for carving you know doing little carving chores around camp making notches and things uh, pot hooks things like that fantastic and the last but not least is the more the traditional Victorinox Swiss Army knife Victorinox has so many different models this one is a gift um, from a friend um, it has a corkscrew which I really don't use that much um, but it also has the added feature of of course tweezers which is a big bonus and then a toothpick on the other side so those are just nice little features. This is, for me, I like to carry this more urban carry. This is more of an urban EDC. I carry this usually almost every day when I go to work. It's just a handy item to have, but it's very similar to the other, to the farmer and the other pocket knives. It has you know, a nice stainless main blade. Your uh, bottle opener, screwdriver, can opener with a small Phillips head on it, which is nice. And then a secondary blade, smaller secondary blade. So not as useful as the other ones because it doesn't have that awl or it doesn't have a saw. Which, you know, for e for bushcrafting and being camp, doing camping, being outdoors, 
I prefer having a good awl or a saw, either one of those two or both. So to get both, you really have to go with the Sack Farmer. This one has the most features that I desire, and that's probably why I use it the most. Um, but close second for me is the R4, or the, excuse me, the R7, Remington R7. Just because it has that awesome saw on it, and it has that spay blade, which I can use for carving. And then the these three are more collector items for me. I don't use them as much in the field anymore, uh, just because I, I don't want to abuse them too much. But they, they work great, too. So just a couple options for you. Um, what do you guys use for pocket knives? I'd love to hear about it. Um, I know everybody has their favorites. Uh, these are some of mine. It's part of my collection, but this is what I use outdoors um, for camping and bushcrafting. So, all right, guys, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on The Prepared Wanderer.